morning I just want to share some thoughts and questions that I've been struggling with recently. And it has to do with rights. This morning I was going over 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And there Paul writes, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not the result of my work in the Lord? See, Paul is defending his rights as an apostle and a teacher. And his rights include the right to earn his living from his teaching. And then Paul makes a bit of a strange transition in verse 19. He says, Though I am free, I belong to no one. I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. Paul goes on to talk about how he has tried to serve different groups of people. And so Paul claims his rights and then willingly gives up his rights. So how could he do such a thing? In another one of Paul's letters to the church in Philippi, Paul encourages the church do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. And then Paul points to the example of Jesus, who he says, who being in very nature God, did not e consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So how does Paul claim his rights and then willingly give up those rights? By following the example of Jesus, who has the ultimate rights and ultimately gives up those rights to die on the cross. And so we go back to 1 Corinthians. In chapter 8, Paul is talking about meat offered to idols, not really an issue in our culture. But the lesson Paul is teaching does have implications for us. Some people were offended by eating meat that is offered to an idol, which was a common practice in the markets of the ancient Roman world. Paul recognizes that idols have no real authority behind them. They're just stone, wood, gold, or whatever. There is only one God. Paul doesn't appear to have any issues with eating the meat. What Paul cautions the Corinthians to consider is how the exercise of their rights impacts those around them. He says, be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. Just for some added context, Paul has already flipped upside down traditional Jewish expectations of strong and weak. Now let me throw something else into the conversation. Because there's another time where Paul holds on to his rights. When Paul's life is being threatened by Jewish leaders, he appeals to his rights as a Roman citizen. This will ultimately take him to Rome where Paul will suffer imprisonment and death. Okay, let's make it messy and have a conversation about our rights. I recognize that for me, it's easy to talk about laying down my rights. I am a white male. And so my rights have never really been in question in America. I go for a walk or I go for a run through our neighborhood without worrying about what I'm wearing. I can wear sweats and a hoodie and I don't worry about someone driving up following me and potentially thinking that I've robbed a house. Ahmad Arbery was shot and killed the other week while out for a run. Maybe for me to talk about laying down rights is itself a statement on privilege and cultural power. Now what about coronavirus? Everyone has an opinion on how our rights apply to this situation. How are our personal rights impacted? How are our religious rights impacted? And as followers of Jesus, what does it look like for us to follow the example of Jesus? Who lays down their rights? 
I think these are incredibly important questions. I also think there are incredibly complex answers. How does the church lay out the complexity? And let me confess that I don't know the answers. I've taken back to Paul's reason for laying down his rights. That is imitating Jesus. Serving, self-sacrificing, good of others oriented. Maybe for me the question is not about how I can exercise my own rights, but how can I love and serve someone different? How can I love and serve those who feel vulnerable? Vulnerable to a virus, vulnerable to those whose rights are threatened. May each of us in our relationship with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. May our reflection of the way of Jesus teach us to seek ways in which we can care for others. And may we be careful that our exercise of our rights does not become a stumbling block and trip others up.